So let's do a let's do a combination this week of Shemot and Va'era, since we uh, we didn't study last week. Okay, so let's begin. Let's begin with Shemot. Who liked Rutia at Rutsa? Latchiel 292. Mashlama Ima? Okay, please send her my uh, Dashham. Okay, thank you. Ve'ele Shemot. <coughs> Good, okay. Mm-hmm. Keep going, all the names, Yisachar. Okay, one more, Vayakam. Okay, so here we are reiterating, right? We, we already came down to Mitzrayim back in Sefer Bereshit, right? Yaakov came down to Mitzrayim, Yosef was there. So we already had that, but we are reiterating that because this, as we mentioned before, is the book of Galut and Geula, the book of exile and the book of redemption. So we need to start with the very beginning of the Galut, so we are reiterating, repeating about Yaakov coming down to Mitzrayim, but we find over here in Pasuk Vav that Yosef and all of his brothers and that whole generation died. So we see that we are deepening, right? When Yosef was alive, <clears throat> so Yosef was the one who saved Egypt during the whole famine, famine, plenty years. But Yosef had died. But then his brothers were still there. There was a certain amount of appreciation, a certain recognition of what they had done. They died. The Chol Hador Hahu, that whole generation died, and now there's a, a Melech Chadash, a new king, Asher lo yada et Yosef, who did not know Yosef. And Rashi very classically <clears throat> brings the explanation. One of them says he was a new king. The other one says, no, he was an old king with a new attitude. And we've had certainly throughout our history many, t- many situations where someone who appeared to be our good friend and then they, um, the, 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 the sands shift and we deal with a very different situation. I said, lo yada et Yosef. <coughs> Some say he didn't know Yosef. Others say he didn't learn the lesson of Yosef didn't learn the lesson of Yosef. And that's very interesting. <clears throat> when we talk about the concept that Hashem, God has his master plan, and that is what is going to be fulfilled in the end. The master plan is going to be fulfilled. We choose what role we're going to be playing in it. Are we the protagonists? Are we the antagonists? Are we the good guys? Are we the bad guys? But ultimately, it's going to happen. Right? And that we saw by Yosef. How did we see that very clearly by Yosef? Well, he had his dreams, which were prophecies of sorts, that everyone would be bowing down to him. The brothers said, Nire, Mayye Chalomotav. Let's see. Let's see what will be with his Chalomot. So, what did the brothers do? They sold him. They sold him as a slave. A way to guarantee that I'm never bowing down to this person. Chance I'll never see him again my whole life. And even if I do bump into him at some point, 
I've destroyed him. I've sold him as a slave. Slaves were never freed. Slaves were never freed. It was a sentence for you and for your children, le doré de for all generations. So they said, we're going to destroy the possibility of this nivuah. They didn't, they, they didn't view it as a prophecy. They viewed it as Yosef's own, own um, exaggerated, egocentric um, delusions. And they said, we're going to destroy it from ever happening. And Hashem <laughs> said, okay, that's how you want it to happen? Fair enough. Sell him as a slave. You can do that. You have your free will. You can do that. And then he rises in the house of Potiphar. Then he's falsely accused. And he descends into the prison. And then he interprets dreams. And then the butler is released. And then Paro has his dreams. And then he interprets those dreams of Paro. And now he's second in command to Egypt. And the brothers come down to Mitzrayim, and what do they do? They yeah. come before this viceroy, and they, Hishtachavu oh. Artsa, they all bow down to the ground. The lesson of Yosef is that there is this master plan, and it's going to be fulfilled. You decide the role that you're going to play in it, but we don't affect the master plan. We control ourselves. That is what is biadeno. We control the role that we play in it. To the point where <clears throat> when, when um, Haman has issued his, dis- his decree to kill all the Jews, and Mordechai has his chance to tell Esther Right? Mm-hmm. To go ahead. Esther, you're there in the palace. You are our ace up the sleeve. You are the great white hope over here for the Jewish people. So we think that Mordechai will say to her, listen, right? Oh, you are the hope. You are. You are the one who can save us. Right? Don't, don't pass us up. Who knows what will happen to us if you don't step forward. Mordechai says nothing of the like. He says, Revach v'hatzala v'in tacharishi be'et hazot If you will be silent at this time, Revach v'hatzala ya'amod li'yudim imakom acher. I don't know if I have it exactly or not, but along those lines. Revach v'hatzala, the redemption, the saving, will, will come for the Jews. Mimakom acher from somewhere else. (laughs) Don't worry. If we're meant to be saved, we're going to be saved. You're not going to do that. It's not you. But you, Ubeit Avich, but you in the house of your father will be uh, eternally shamed. You in the house of your father will be eternally shamed if you don't take this opportunity Second, don't imagine that you're going to be uh, escaping safe, safe and sound in the house of the king. If you will be silent, and you in the house of your father will be destroyed. What's going to happen with the Jews? is going to happen with the Jews. This, this manifest destiny, the, this eternity, is not dependent on you. What's dependent upon you is the role that you play. But we can't twist around the, 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 the master plan of Hashem. There was a Melech Hadash who didn't know Yosef. He didn't learn this lesson of Yosef. And what did he do? He started making all these decrees against all the Jews. And then finally, what does he say? Call 
Haden Hayilod Hayora Tash Li Khuhu. Right? Every page two ninety-six. Right? It keeps getting deeper and deeper and worse and worse. And then Paro, Vayitzav Paro, Lechol Amo Lemor. Paro then commands all of his people saying, Kol Haden Hayilod. Every boy that is born. Hayora Tashlichuhu. Into the river should be thrown. Vechol Abat Tichayun. And all the daughters, they're fine. All the doors are fine. Every boy. Why every boy? Take a look in the Rashi over there on the bottom. He commanded Lekol Amo, his entire nation, Af Alehem Gazar. This decree was even against the Egyptians on that day. Yom Shenolad Moshe, the day that Moshe was born, Amrulo Itzdaginilav, his um, soothsayers, his stargazers, said to him, Hayom nolad Moshian. Today, their Redeemer is, is being born. We don't know. Is he an Egyptian? Or is he an Israelite? But we see Shesofo Lilkot Bamayim. His demise, his downfall, is going to be because of or via water. Lefikach, therefore, Gazer Otoyom Af Ala Mitzrim. Right? Therefore, they decreed that day even on the Egyptian. Shinemar, Kol Hayiben Hayilod. Every boy that is born. Lo never hayilulu ivrim, not those who were born to the ivrim, to the Israelites. Every single one has to be thrown into the water. In the end, so they saw, but they have a very cloudy vision in what they're able to see. Why were they confused if Moshe was a Mitzri, if the if the redeemer would be a Mitzri or would be an Ivri? Why were they confused? Looking forward, why were they confused? Moshe was a Mitzri and an Ivri. Moshe was brought up in the palace of, of Paro. Moshe was educated. Moshe was brought up over there by Paro. Right? He went out to see how his brethren were doing. Right? But Moshe was brought up there in the palace. When Moshe saves, when he, when he flees from Egypt, and he saves the daughters of Yitro from the shepherds who were stealing the water that they had drawn, they came back to their father, and what did they say? Ish Mitzri. Hitzilanu. An Egyptian man saved us. Now, don't think that, you know, he left Egypt and went to the well, and all that happened, you know, lickety-slick. Right? He was either 12 or 18 when we'll, when we'll soon see this episode that, t- that took place, and he ran. He was 80 when he returned to Paro. So we're talking about decades and decades, yet they referred to him as, as an Ish Mitzri. So they were unsure, is he an Ish Mitzri? Is he an, is he an Egyptian man? Or is he a, an Ivri man, a Jewish man? So he said, everyone needs to be. And they said, he will, his, his downfall will be the water. What water is that? The Nile. Hmm? The Nile. The, well, that's, therefore they said, throw him in the water. But what actually was his water downfall? The rock. The rock. Ah, Meimeriva. Right? When he was supposed to speak to the rock. And instead he hit the rock Pa'amayim. And therefore... He never went into the land of Israel. He was buried on, on uh, Har Nevo, right? Nebe Moshe is, is the name that the Jordanians call that mountain, the one that they think is where Moshe is, is buried. Nebe Moshe. Ne, Nebe Musa. Nebe Musa. Sorry? Jabba Musa. Jabba Musa? Jabba Musa. I think also Nebe Musa. 
from that. The Injaba is, is a mountain? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <clears throat> I, I'm wondering if the decree uh, like to kill every uh, single boy and born that day. Yeah. Since from this day and on. When Moshe grew up in No, in not not that day and on. On that day. Just that day. Oh just that day. That, that day. day. Only. That but day. I'm just saying how Paro and all the people that were there with him in the palace wasn't suspicious that he is going to be the redeemer because like they see that he's a Jew. He he know he, they see they see what's happening. So all of a sudden what's gonna happen? They don't <coughs> they don't Yeah, you you're asking a great question, Ruti. And and that's Asher Lo Yada et Yosef. <coughs> he did not yeah. learn the lesson of Yosef. Because yeah. Because exactly <laughs> what they did to try to prevent the Moshian of Israel is what brought about the Redeemer of Israel. He's brought up in the palace, housed by Paro, clothed by Paro, fed by Paro, educated by Paro, and as he's pointing out beautifully, Ruti, and it's all going on right under his nose. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Now, they, Moshe ended up having been um, born earlier, right? In other words, Moshe was, well, we'll soon see now. Let, let, let's go for a minute over here. Vayelech Ish, someone will take it in Hebrew, 296. Vayelech Perek Bet Pasuk Aleph. Good. Let's have, let's have this in English. Someone take it for English, please. The man went to the house of Levi and he took a daughter of Levi. The woman conceived and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was good and she hid him for three months. So just like to interject for a second, right? The Torah makes no qualms about this great leader of Israel, about the greatest Navi, the greatest prophet that ever was and ever will be, about this person who is called Ish HaElokim, a man of God, and it makes it very clear, a man married a woman and she got pregnant and gave birth to a son. Right? And you look at you look at the world today, right, with Christianity, and you look at so many of the other religions, right? They all begin with this miraculous, right? I don't know if you knew this, but um, Kim Jong Il, he's a god. He's a god. He wasn't born from a mother and a father. You thought he was born from a mother and a father? No, a star descended on North Korea. <laughs> And that became King Jong Il, right? You know, I mean, it, 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 today, right? How many billions of people think that in order to be this, you know, great, 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 you know, be it Jesus or King Jong Il, right? It can't be from a, a man and a woman. It must be this immaculate, cons- right? And the Torah says, right, that's a cop out. Because if that's the case, what do you expect from me? Right? There was no star that landed in, a, in Queens, New York that produced Cener, so what do you expect from me? Right? right? But that's a cop-out. Moshe was born from a man from the house of Levi and a daughter of Levi and gave birth to a, a basar vadam, a person of flesh and blood. Okay? And she hid him. Continue, Marta, please. Uh, she could not hide him any longer, so she took him from a wicker basket 
and smeared it with plain pitch. She placed the boy in it and placed it amongst the reeds at the bank of the river. His sister stationed herself at a distance to know what would be done with him. Pharaoh's daughter went down to bathe by the river, and her maidens walked along the river. She saw the basket among the reeds, and she sent her maidservant, and she took it. She opened it and saw him, the boy, and behold, a youth was crying. She took pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrew boys. His sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and summon you? Shall I go and summon for you a wet nurse from the Hebrew women who will nurse the boy for you? The daughter of Pharaoh said, Go. The girl went and summoned the boy's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this boy and nurse him for me. I will give you pay. So the woman took the boy and nursed him. No, we, if I just interject for a second. We have a concept. Yeshua Tashem Keheref Ayin. God's redemption comes like the blink of an eye. Like the blink of an eye. Here you had a woman. I mean, just imagine for a moment, right? A woman taking her infant child, putting him in a basket, and pushing him out into the river, and not even being able to stick around to see what's going to happen. Only the sister, Miriam, stayed around. The mother, we can understand. <laughs> what am I going to watch? My child, it's enough, I'm, right? I'm going to watch my child. Next thing she knows, she's being paid by Paro's daughter to nurse her child. She's being paid by Paro's daughter to nurse her child. The boy grew up? Ten? The boy grew up and brought him uh, and the boy grew up and she brought him to the daughter of Pharaoh, and he was a son to her. She called him Moses, as she said, for I drew him from the water. Now this is fascinating for a moment. <coughs> the, 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 the Gemara tells us that Moshe actually had many names, right? For sure his mother, the parents must have named him something, right? Uh, right? And there are many different names we have from Moshe. Tuvia. Avigdor, yeah, right? They saw that he was Tov, right? The Gemara goes through many different names. But the name, the name throughout the Torah is Moshe, right? The, the, the most common pasuk in the entire Torah is Vaidaber Hashem El Moshe Lemor. God spoke to Moshe saying, right? Hashem calls him Moshe. Throughout the Torah, he is Moshe. We say every Shabbat, every time we lift the Torah, Zot Torah, Asher Sam Moshe. With Nebine Yisrael. Why is it that the name that the daughter of Paro gave him is the name? Is the name throughout the Torah? Paro's door, the, the Egyptian girl's name, that, the, uh, the, the, the name that the Egyptian girl gives him, that is Kodesh Kadashim. That is what becomes the Holy of Holies. That is what becomes his name throughout all time. Seems strange, huh? Isn't that the divine providence that Christ obviously is? Yeah, yeah, but what can we learn from it? Be well, Sandy. What can we learn from that? <coughs> She was, he was saved by this name. name. Okay. Take it further, Ruti. And no matter, no matter what, it's, this was his, it doesn't matter the name, he, this was his path towards prophecy and, and leadership. And although he was at the palace by Pharaoh with a name, with an Egyptian name, Okay, so you want to say Lomrot Kol Kach, right? Lomrot Vavavit. Lomrot With all of that going against him, look what he became. With all that going against him, look what he became. I hear differently. I hear that here is this daughter of Paro, who, as Ruti said, 
put it all out there for him. Right? Put herself in danger. Right? What's her father going to do? Did her father know? Did he not know? I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Right? Did the father know? If the father didn't know, so there's always the concern that he might find out. And what type of reaction will he have to Moshe and to his daughter? And if he did know, then it was constantly, constantly, constantly on this, on the edge, on the (coughs) precipice over there. Right? She made incredible mesirut nefesh. Mesirut nefesh is putting myself in danger, going far and beyond for the sake of someone else. And that, that she, right? And that's the name. Min hamayim mi shi tihu. She called him Moshe ki min hamayim mi shi mi shi tihu. Because I drew him from the water. I extricated him. I pulled him out. I rescued him. Putting myself in terrible danger. But I put myself on the line for him. And that became, that became the very essence of Moshe. Who was Moshe? Moshe was a person who, from beginning to end, put himself out there for other people. Put himself on the line. We'll soon see early in his life, and that continues throughout, until much later, which we, uh, we will come to, right, by the Chet HaEgel, the sin of the golden calf. Forgive them, if not, Mecheni na misifrecha asher katafta, erase me from this book. I want nothing to do with it. With the Maraglim, with Korach, on and on and on and on and on. What is Moshe constantly doing? putting himself out there. So it's not even though the daughter of Paro named him this name. I would say this name is what she put into him and that's what he became, a name in Lashon HaKodesh, a name is Megale Et It reveals the very essence of what something is. Moshe says it all. That's who and what he was. Yeah, I, I just had a comment. If, uh, <coughs> um, if, uh, if Pharaoh's daughter called Moshe the way she called, because Mina it tells me that Egyptian was like Hebrew, it's the same rule. Good, yeah. yeah like so, the, so what was yeah, going on? Is so it the, really the, Egyptian or is yeah, it really Yeah, the Mepharshim speak about that. I don't know if it brings it over here. So the name yeah. is both So rules? actually, if you take a look on, on the Moshe notes over here, look, look on the bottom over here, yeah. right? Moses. She gave him the Egyptian name Monios which means that he was drawn from the water. Moses, Moshe, is the Hebrew translation of that word. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, Dov? <Doug. coughs> if you look at the name Moshe, it has a hey at the end, with a little bit, if you fill it in, you got Moshe. Okay, interesting thoughts. But he's that close to being Moshe. Okay. Okay, let's turn the page. Let's see how this Moshe became this Moshe, this Moshean Shel Yisrael. Vayigdal Moshe, Moshe got older. Vayetzei Elechav, he went out to his brothers. Right away we see that he's not sitting comfortably, safely, royally there in the palace, he went out to his brothers. He had this sense. These were his brethren, this knowledge. Vayar b'siv lotam. And he saw 
their difficulties. Vayar Ish Mitzri, he saw an Egyptian man, Makeh beating Ish Ivri, an Ivri man, once again, Me'echav, right? Me'echav, from his brothers, once again, emphasizing. Vayif and Ko, Vako, Vayar Ki ain't Ish. He turned this way and that way and saw that there was no one there. On a simple level, there was no one who was watching. At least he thought there was no one watching. Vayachet HaMitzri. In order to save the life of this Jew who was being beaten mercilessly, he smote the Mitzri and he hid him in the hall. Right away... Um, to kill instead of trying to... Um, I think of a concentration camp. I think of a person being beaten with those trudgeons that they were being beaten. What are you going to do? Um, excuse me, sir. I think perhaps maybe, um, you know, uh, you know in, in certain situations... Yeah. The, the, Yaffe might have a point. Didn't Moshe have a lot of royal power? Couldn't he have just said, stop this, and then have the fellow imprisoned? Probably not. Probably not. Because if he's going to be um, going against Paro's decrees, right? Oh. Then the, the fact that he's a, you know, a, 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 a prince. prince, right? You know, mm -hmm. tell that to the princes in Saudi Arabia, just how safe they are. <laughs> As princes, when when they go against the the, the man on top, did yeah. Knew, did Moshe know he was Jewish? He 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 had to know. He had to know. He had to because know. Because if it's like his yeah. brother, he had to know. He had to know. He had that. Yeah. He was he was brought up in his house till a young a certain age, and he had to know, he had to have known, right? You know, there are those that explain <clears throat> a little less literally. Vayar ki ain ish. Right, that he recognized that um, you know he himself, right? Is what is he? Is he an ish mitzri, right? And he realized that he needed to ain ish that he that, that, that he can't he, he can't have his double identity, and he had to um, he had to do what he needed to do. So that led, <coughs> on Sunday, this brought up another question from a di completely different havara in their discussion. Um, so Paro knew because because. So we discussed before. It's, it, it, we don't know what Paro knew. But but certainly Paro's daughter knew because she said. This certainly the daughter of Paro knew. Yeah, what Paro knew we don't know. And Ruti mentioned, right, if he knew that there was a, that, that, that this was a Jewish child in the palace, then it's even more even more miraculous, right? But most we see Moshe gets involved, right? He went on the second day. And behold, Shnei Anashim Yivrimi Tzim, there are two Jewish men arguing. Vayomer Rush, and he gets involved. Lama Take Lereyecha, why are you smiting your friend? And they say, who appointed you to be an officer and a judge over us? Hala Geni do you want to kill us also? Moshe saw the matter was known. Moshe had to run away. So Moshe got involved. Got involved twice. And what's the result? And again, this is the Moshe that Bat Paro, the daughter of Paro, right, put into him with her Mesirut Nefesh, with her putting herself out there to save him. He becomes the one who is putting himself out there for others. He smites the Mitzri. He gets involved when these two Jews are fighting. He has to run for his life. And he figured, I've learned my lesson. And what happens? And he goes out to a be'er, to a well. And Kohi Midian, right, the minister of Midian, in 16 in English, had seven daughters. They came and drew water and filled the troughs to fill the water of the father's sheep. Shepherds came, drove them away. Moshe got up and saved them and watered their sheep. Right? Again and again and again. Right? He would not learn his lesson that, you know, as we say, no good deed goes unpunished. 
and therefore let me not get involved. Moshe was getting involved, getting involved, getting involved. There's a beautiful, beautiful book uh, titled A Tzaddik in Our Time about Rav Arye Levin, who was a, a Rav in Yerushalayim. This is during the time of the, of the Haganah, right, going through the 1940s, and he became the Rav of the prison. And the prison originally was all these Haganah fighters that were imprisoned by the, by the British in the Russian compound, as we call it today, right? And he would go there and minister to them. He would serve as their Rav, and he'd also carry messages up, up and back between them and other Haganah leaders. He was an amazing, amazing person. After the State of Israel was formed, now the prison was no longer filled with these Haganah members, but it was filled with the usual, the usual clientele that, um, that houses, that populates uh, the prisons, right? But they were Yehudim, right? And he didn't stop, right, going and serving. And uh, one of my favorite stories from the book, it's, it's, it's just such a short, short little uh, episode. Uh, one of the prisoners was released late in the afternoon, and he lived far from Yerushalayim, and he needed a place to sleep that night. So where, where, where would he go, just out of prison? So he goes to the house of Rav Arya Levin. Excuse me, not the house, the home of Rav Arya Levin. Because his home was a one room, not a one bedroom, a one room apartment. And he would say to his wife, we live like kings. We never need to go to the next room to get anything we need. <laughs> we live like kings. So this person knocks on the door, right? Can I spend the night? I need a place to sleep. And tomorrow I'm planning on going back to wherever he lived, right? And they said, of course. So they strung up a sheet to have a little partition, a little privacy. And the person, uh, and, and they went to sleep that night. In the morning, they woke up and their guest was gone, along with their Shabbat candlesticks, which was basically the only thing of any, of any material value that they previously had owned until it, it had been uh, lifted by their, by their guest. And when they realized it was gone, he immediately turned to his wife and he said to her, let us resolve that this should not in any way affect our willingness to have guests in the future. Let's right now, let's make sure that we nip it in the bud and we don't allow this feeling to turn into a sense of, well, I can't have guests, look what happened, look what happened last time, right? That's Moshe. Moshe is getting involved. He is Moshe as Bat Paro put into him, that is who and what he became. And he ends up staying there, and he uh, marries Sipora, right, one of the daughters. And then what happens? Right, it's amazing, these parsha just how quickly things are unfolding. Let's go to page 300, right? Perek uh, Gimel, right? First be Ivrit, Moshe Yoroet Son Yitro. Chavod. Moshe Yoroet Son Yitro, Hotno Kohen Midian, Vain Haged at Son, Achar Hamidbar, Vavol, Hara Elohim Horeva, Vaira Malach Adonai Lav, Belabat Esh, Mitoch Asne, Vayar Vine Asne Boer, Baesh, Vasne Nenu Ukal, Vayomer Moshe Asur and Naver Eta Marea Gadolaze. מדוע לא יבער הסנה? וירא אדוני כי שר לראות ויקרא אליו אלוהים מתוך הסנה ויאמר משה. ויאמר משה משה ויאמר הנני. ויאמר אל תקרב הלום שאל נעליך מעל רגליך כי המקום אשר אתה עומד עליו אדמת קודש הוא. Beautiful. באנגלית בבקשה. Someone in English please. Uh, chapter 3 from verse 1 and on. Moshe was shepherding the sheep of Yitro, <coughs> his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He guided the sheep far into the wilderness and he arrived at the mountain of God, toward Horeb. So the mountain of God is Har Sinai. 
right? It's called that al shem ha'atid, right? It will become har ha'elokim. An angel of Hashem appeared to him in a blaze of fire from amid the bush. He saw, and behold, the bush was burning in the fire, but the bush was not consumed. Moshe thought, I will turn aside now and look at this great sight. Why will the bush not be burned? Hashem saw that he turned aside to see, and God called out to him in the, from amid the bush and said, Moses, Moses, Moshe, Moshe, and he replied, Here I am. He said, Do not come closer to here. Remove your shoes from your feet, for the place upon which you stand is holy ground. Beautiful. So we look at this for a second over here. Hashem saw that he turned to see. Vayar Hashem kisar lirot. Hashem saw that he had turned to see. <clears throat> and therefore he called him. Right? And had Moshe... It, it seems that we're giving a lot of importance. Oh, because he turned to see, that's why he merited to have God speak to him and to be... Uh, appointed as the one who was to be sent to Paro to bring the children out. Now, why is that so important? Right? What's the big deal of turning to see? Of course, right? Th th there's a very strange phenomenon taking place. Something is, bush is on fire and it's not being consumed. So what is the big deal that Hashem saw, oh, kisar lirot. So there are those that explain that this is going back to one page, to page 298, Pasuk Yud Al that we saw before. Vayihi vayemim ahem, and it was in those days, Vayigdal Moshe, Moshe grew up. Vayetzei el achav, and he went out to his brothers. Vayar besiv lotam, and he saw their difficulties. Vayar, and he saw Ish Mitzri. Vayar ki ein Ish. He saw there was no man, there, there was no men. Right? Moshe is a Sar Lirot. Moshe is a person. It's not that he turned to see now this burning bush. Who wouldn't turn to see the burning bush? He saw, Hashem saw that Moshe was a Sar Lirot. He was a person who went off to see, to see difficulties, to see travails, to see challenges, to see pain in the world, and say, I've got to try to correct that. I've got to try to rectify that, right? That is going back, of course, to Avraham Avinu. Right? When there was Tsar with Sodom and Amorah, Hashem tells him, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Amorah. Avraham jumps up to try to advocate, to argue, right? to try to save them. And that is, that is Avraham. And that is Moshe. Moshe is a Tsar Lirot. <clears throat> and he tells them the place you're standing is holy. And then he tells him, that, right, I'm the God of your father, I've seen uh, the affliction of my people, I've heard its outcry, right, I will dispatch you to Paro, you will take my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Now, what would we, what would we expect Moshe's reaction to be? Here I am, Hineni, sign me up, right? Show me the, where, where, where can I catch the express bus? Right? But Moshe starts, no, no, not me, not me, not me, not me. How do we understand that? Well, How he, do we understand that? He was concerned for the chavod of, of our own. Okay, okay. But still, <clears throat> it says well, that... On got, one level, right, shlach na biyad tishlach. Right? He says to Hashem, send with the one who you normally send. Meaning, he was concerned with the kavod of Aharon. Right? I don't want to be <coughs> stepping on other people's toes. 
Aaron had been the leader, Shlach Nabi Shlach, with the one that you normally are Shalayach, right? I don't want to usurp someone else's position. Is that more important than taking the children out of Egypt? Is that more important than taking the children out of Egypt? Well, considering that we have the lesson of, you know, the Midrashic lesson of sparing the challah for the wine, sensitivity to feelings, apparently, but at least by rabbinic judgment, is pretty high. Okay. I mean, it could be. I'm, I, 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 myself, I myself am trying to sort this out. It wasn't that it wasn't going to happen, but, you know, I, I mean, actually, it's fascinating, right? I'm willing to do anything and everything for everyone else, but it doesn't have to be me. I mean, that's an incredible lesson. You know, how do you combine the two? Very often, a person is willing to do everything, right? Not only is he willing to do everything, but it often becomes about that person. And it's got to be me, right? I've got to be the one that's doing it. And we often lose sight of the real mission, the real goal is that it be done, that it be accomplished.